conceptual people talk Real about talk, it. Life, no Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everything is going well. Um, where you're at, uh, Houston, we are on the back end of a winter storm that we were obviously not prepared to deal with. Uh, it's been crazy. My wife and I were actually out of town when it started. Uh, one of our older sons, uh, who is 30, was here with some of the younger ones, uh, ages 18 down to 13. And so we thought, you know, we were good to go take care of what we needed to do. Uh, for ourselves so we kind of creeped off and got trapped uh, where we were and had to deal with that um, by the time we finally got home which was night before last um, the lights had been off for all but six hours since Sunday morning at 2 a.m. Um, they came back on later that night and with the exception of about maybe three or four hours uh, they've been on uh, which is a good thing we did have some water damage due to a burst pipe uh, but nothing as extensive as some of the things I've seen from some friends uh, and relatives also some pictures I've seen on social media social media uh, we're obviously gonna have to have some things uh, repaired but all in all everybody's in good health uh, I did lose an uncle um, the night I returned home uh, it's it's one of those hard ones to uh, process because it's my dad's fine uh, uh, last surviving sibling so that entire brood of siblings have uh, transitioned and this was the youngest and he and I were pretty close because we weren't that far apart in age um, he is actually how I got to know who my dad was because I never met him but uh, so we're dealing with that but all in all uh, everyone's um, doing okay in the wireless household um, things are slowly getting back to normal we are right now in the middle of a hard freeze that if we can get through today we're going to be fine because the temperatures start to go back up starting tomorrow uh, I just want to kind of drop that off because I haven't been weighing in I've been dealing with the fact that we were kind of away from the kids and trying to keep things handled uh, at a distance and uh, so uh, I want to do that now I want to talk real briefly about this thing that's going on predominantly about Russell Wilson that's some things going on with Lori Harvey and Michael B Jordan to me Michael B Jordan and Lori Harvey aren't married uh, so I'm not going to really get off into that um, but I will deal with this whole idea that's floating around and that's being predominantly pushed by black men uh, that Russell Wilson is a simp because of the way he moves and acts uh, with Seattle with Seattle it's a shame that in a society in which our men are so important that we don't see the value of relationship with our women that it has become so easy for black men to blame black women for the current state of black America without seeing our role in it as professed leaders. I've talked about this before. You cannot profess to be a leader and then point the finger of blame at those you are supposed to be leading. In other words, you don't see when, when teams don't perform, coaches get fired. Why? They're the leader. When companies don't perform, CEOs get fired. Why? They are the leader. In any situation where you are the leader, yes, there are going to be other people, and no, they may not be performing up to their expectations. It's your responsibility to figure out how to reach them. It's not your first responsibility to take the simple and easy way out, which is to point the finger and say, look at what they're doing. I'm not defending wayward behavior of black women. I know it exists. I deal with it on a regular basis. Uh, with with uh, the people I work with and those that I help I'm not uh, ignorant to that fact but here's my point 
until black men understand the importance of loving black women back to life, which is a prime example of what happened in this particular situation, we're going to continue to see the decline in black America. Why? Because we will only get as high as our black women can lift us spiritually and we will only get as far as our black men can lead us physically and we both need each other. We can sit up and consistently wage this war against one another being a war that's being facilitated and propelled by a narrative presented by those who do not represent us or do not have our best interests at heart. We consistently see all the fallibilities and erroneous behavior of the other side without ever taking time to sit down and take an introspective examination of self. When I look at what's going on in my marriage, I look at me. Why? The buck stops here. It's not that no one else is involved. It's not that there couldn't be some issues on the other side. It's that I'm responsible. It doesn't mean I'm responsible to caving to every demand and every way with thought and idea that's being brought to me by my spouse. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm responsible for what happens sometimes uh, that means saying, hey, this is not going to work. This is not how we're going to do things and being very assertive when doing it, but knowing how to love my wife, knowing how to cover my wife, knowing how to be everything my wife needs, knowing how to understand that expressing my strength with my wife has to be different than expressing my strength with anyone else. Now, uh, what I will point out to my sisters is when examining this and you're elevating uh, Russell Wilson, be very clear to understand that Ciara has played a role in how this has gone. Ciara has been accepting of his leadership. She has been accepting of his force. And I love it because she didn't need him. She had an identity. She had a career. She was going to be okay without him financially. Where he came in and started a healing was in the area of emotion. He covered her emotionally. He covered her spiritually. He covered her and he treated her not how necessarily she was behaving or carrying herself, but by based on the potential he saw in her. He treated her with the level of love and respect that he saw. He gave her a worth and a value that may not have even matched how she was behaving at the time. But what happens is his standard raised the level of behavior and things like that. At the same time, he gives her the freedom to be hurt. He's not stifling her. He's not sitting up placing demands on her what she can and cannot do. He simply holds and treats her in a different way than she's ever been treated before, and she responds to it. So, women, when you talk about that type of man, you got to be willing to respond to it. There are so many women that have been on their own for so long, so many women that have stood up and dealt with abandonment who, that have dealt with being a single parent that have dealt with being the head of household for so long that when a guy comes along you don't know how to surrender the reins you don't know how to stand in place you see it as a, a, a an act of weakness or surrender and it's not it, 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 it it's it's an act of sinking and merging with each person facilitating and carrying out their own specific role within the relationship which is equally powerful my role as a man is to be a, pro a provider it doesn't mean that my wife is not uh, a contributor it means that I am responsible beyond all other for making sure that things happen there's nothing wrong with a woman contributing that idea that if a man doesn't pay everything, he's not a man. It's that the commodification of men that has made black men obsolete because we're underemployed because of a bunch of other things. We don't see the value in black men in other areas. I'm not, again, not saying that we aren't uh, uh, supposed to be providers. I'm saying that we've got to train young black men to understand that if we consistently put ourselves in a situation where we are depending on a system that knows the importance of suppressing us for our ability to provide. We're never going to be where we need to be. We're going to have to create our own. We're going to have to own our own businesses. We're going to have to create our own market. We're going to create our own industries. Why? Because we have to control the mechanisms that allow us to be providers. And when we do that, we will be able to uh, be sole providers, but we will never be able to do more than we can do as a whole, as a couple, as a unit. 
it is immensely important that we understand that. So in essence, what I'm getting at here is my biggest issue is how many people, specifically black men, are in an uproar because this brother is treating his wife like a queen. That the idea of a man doting over his woman, we're not talking about some chick you meet on the street. We're not talking about somebody you just casually seeing, and I've got my issues with all of that, but we're going to leave that for another day. We're talking about somebody you've put a ring on their finger, you've taken vows with, you're building a life with, you now have children with, you are helping raise a child from another one, and there's this joint blended uh, family growing. How are you supposed to treat her? How is the idea that that's a certain thing as being too good to a woman or, or, or too open to a woman? See, my thing is we have to deal with some of the trauma that we don't want to talk about. Normally when you get men who have host inherent hostility towards women is because of issues with women early in life and they never dealt with it. It's from faulty paradigms set by erroneous models of what manhood is. When you have 1.5 million black men missing in the hood, you're gonna have a bunch of kids, a bunch of males who don't know what true manhood is. You're gonna have a bunch of kids, a bunch of men. Uh, you have a bunch of men who are going to be hyper masculine hyper aggressive self preserving to the point of selfishness a lack of understanding of roles and how it pertains to dealing with a person more inclined to be tight with their boys than they are with their women irresponsible and immature in parenting why because it wasn't modeled because in many instances mom was the head of the household mom was the dominant force in the household they didn't have the the privilege of watching a man cover his woman while I never knew my father and didn't have a mother-son relationship with my mom, I was reared by my great-grandparents and I watched them for the first 25 years of my life. They were married for 43 years before my great-grandfather succumbed uh, to leukemia at the age of 83. And I watched how he covered her. I listened to the stories, not just that they told, but those who had known them long before I was born, how they expressed how they carried out their marriage. Did they always agree? Absolutely not. But did they deal with their disagreements in one of the most respectful ways imaginable? Absolutely. I saw him cover him, her. I saw him maintain a level of calm when I know she had him hot. And that's my thing. I can count on my hand in the time that I've been married to my wife that I raised my voice. And I felt like crap after doing it. I never call her out of her name. I never put my hands on her in any other way than to be comfort, a comfort and, 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 and to assure her of her security and her safety. She says I'm overprotective. That's because she hadn't been protected properly. So she sees me as being overprotective because she's never experienced it at that level. And again, I have to understand that. I have to understand what I'm dealing with. And I don't force it. I cultivate it. I don't come in and this is what you're going to do. I'm the head of the house. I'm... No, I cultivate it. I give her as much room as she needs to figure this thing out because she's never seen it before. She's not my subordinate. She's my partner.
Look. It would be foolish to think that Russell and Sierra don't have their ups and downs. That's life. No marriage is perfect. No life situation comes and and actually uh, ends up being without challenge. Matter of fact, I can tell you from experience, everything in life that I consider worth having of any significant value came at a price, came with challenges, came with a demand that I be more forthcoming with my energy, my effort, my force, and my commitment. It demanded that I be willing to go the distance to have it and to sustain it. There is no such thing as something being easy. I didn't say it was easy. What I said is that it's possible and we have to sit up and understand what they're presenting is 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 is, is also measured. They are both public figures which means they have image consultants, they have PR people, and so there's an image they're presenting purposefully. But you get to see them in some is issues that are kind of impromptu Instagram moments, and you get to see how they interact, and you can see the authenticity of it. So, no, I'm not, I'm not ignorant to the fact that there's an image being presented on purpose. I deal with this as a part of what I do, I deal with couples, I deal with families, been doing it for years. That's what I do. I'm a behavioral specialist. That's what I do. So I'm able to observe and see when something is authentic and not, again, not saying that it's perfect, not saying that it's beyond uh, corruption, because all it takes is to start taking something for granted and the cracks in the orifice of the relationship will begin to widen and open and things will seep in and you can have destruction no matter where you are love is something that consistent that has to be consistently cultivated what i'm saying here is we as black men are going to have to do a better job that's what i spend so much time pushing with black men lead it's the cultivation of young black males into a mindset of covering our women in, 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 instead of blaming our women again this isn't to sit up and say that our women are without culpability in the reality that we live in this is not to say that our women are not responsible for some of the things that are going on they make decisions they've done some things this is not what this is about what this is about is saying if i'm going to be a leader that i have to take on the role of responsibility even when i'm not committing the act something that my grandmother taught me growing up and I asked her, I said, he, I said, daddy, no, these are my great grandparents. This is my grandmother's parents. So when I say grandmother, I'm actually meaning great grandparents or great grandmother, great grandfather. But something my, uh, my grandmother taught me, I went to her and I'm, I was talking to her as a young kid. You know, I was quite precocious as a kid. So I always was paying attention to things that the average kid my age wouldn't be. And so I would ask questions that the average kid probably wouldn't ask or even be concerned with. And I was like, okay. First of all, he has a second grade education. He can't read. So anything he tells you to do, he has to trust you can do it. So if you don't agree with him, you can pretty much do what you want to do and tell him you did it. She said, that's not how we work. We work on trust. I said, because, okay, so you own your own business. She had owned her own salon for years. You own your own business, so you, you're, you're self-sufficient. Um, so tell me, why do you feel you have to listen to, and take take his he said let me tell you something no matter how many jobs i get no matter how much i put into this house if something goes wrong in this house who you think they're going to blame they're going to blame the man in the house the man is going to always get the blame and i believe he's going to get the blame he should also get the glory he said she, she said let me tell you something though what i can tell you is why i trust him and i said why he's not perfect he makes mistakes like anybody else but if he makes a mistake he fixes it if he's wrong on the decision he makes, he comes back and he says, I'm sorry. We should have done it that way. Then he turns around and he fixes it. That's all I could ever ask for in a man, baby. And I said, yes, ma'am. I trust him because he's consistent, not because he's perfect. I trust him because he's committed, not because he's perfect. I trust him because he covers me, not because he's perfect. We've got to stop thinking that loving our women makes us soft. 
There's nothing more masculine than loving your woman. There's nothing more masculine than covering your woman. There's nothing more masculine than providing a hedge of protection and security and safety around your woman. You know why? Because when you provide that security around your woman, you allow her to operate in her spiritual prowess. You allow her to open up her spiritual womb. You allow her to incubate your visions and dreams. You allow her to incubate your ideas and concepts. You allow her to take what you see for the family and bring it into the spiritual realm and incubate it so that it can be birthed. There is a commonality and connectivity when we think that we're missing because we've allowed the narratives being written by those who don't represent us or bear real true uh, concern with our interests to present us with a narrative that's focusing on an external idea of something that doesn't cultivate the true nature of black love. We're so worried about getting got or someone getting over on us that we can't love. One of the things I said when I started this thing 15 plus years ago as far as black men lead and what we're doing with the Odyssey Project on a official level. I've been doing this this research and this thing for 30 years. Uh, 30 plus years actually. 35 now to be exact. 35 years since I first ran in Dr. Francis Chris Welsing on the Field Donahue Show in 1985. And I've been going ever since. She's the reason I got into psychology. But anyway, check this out. One of the things I cultivated, one of the things I've said, one of the things my wife even repeats to this day is the black man has to be willing to love the black woman back to life. We have to be willing to take into consideration what the black woman is going through without being so focused or fearful that in acknowledging her pain, we are marginalizing our own. We're so worried that if we say we know what you've been through, that people will forget what we've gone through as black men, the targets we have on our backs. The level of fear that white men have of us and everything that is done to keep us suppressed. We feel if we acknowledge what the black woman has gone through, somehow we get lost. We need to learn how to love our women back to life. And this journey that I've had has been nothing short of an amazing. Coming from the streets, the inner city streets of Houston, um, having a, a pretty cool childhood, all things considered, because both of my parents had good incomes even though we were in the inner city and I mean literally neighbors across the street down the street up the street were struggling uh, just to make ends meet keep lights on and all that we never dealt with that honestly but I grew up in the midst of it I saw it every day I breathed it in every day and I knew the monster that was waiting there to consume me if I didn't get out I didn't get out without some scrapes and bruises I've I've got scars to prove uh, prove it. I just made up in my mind that that would not be the narrative of my life, that I was consumed by poverty and never, ever truly actualized my potential. But what it allows me to see is the ability to take anything and resuscitate it and bring it back to life. That's what we've got to do with black love. We've got to celebrate it when we see it. We've got to cover it. We've got to protect it. We've got to participate in it. And on that note, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Don't forget to support the work we're doing. There's so much going on. It's, uh, things are kind of crazy. Uh, for those of you who have been sending and checking on me with everything that's going on right now with the weather and, you know, with everything else, uh, thank you. Uh, we're going to get through this uh, like we get through everything else. Um, show uh continue to show love uh like i said the link to support what we do is going to be in the description box uh click that or 
you can uh, support us through the organization's um, cash app account uh, we're going to continue to work we're going to continue to do what we do uh, I'm going to be getting back to you uh, more consistently hopefully once the storm is over and we have consistent power uh, then I can sort of set up a schedule to get back you know I've had to reschedule with all my clients this week so got to get all that back going but anyway I just wanted to stop in and kind of talk on that uh, hopefully um, I've kind of made a point uh, and brothers who are really truly serious about loving black women you can't get caught up on what these cats are going to say because they're going to say it about you I mean you just got some cats that are simply lost in a fake narrative of what they're supposed to be to the point that they can't be who they are capable of being and they actually see pride, have pride in that and it's absolutely nothing you're going to do to change that our women need us and with all their fallibilities, with all their shortcomings, with all that stuff that people love to malign them about, they need us. That's what kings do. That's what heads do. That's what leaders do. They take the front line and they say, we're going to build something better. On that note, look, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.